Hi guys, Olive here, here today to review Wonder Girl, The Magnificent Sporting Life of Babe Diedrichson Zaharias by Dawn Van Natta Jr. This book was published in 2011 by Little Brown and Company, and the hardcover comes in at 416 pages. As the title of this book suggests, this is a sports biography that focuses on Mildred Babe Diedrichson, later known as Babe Diedrichson Zaharias after her marriage, a sports superstar who excelled in a number of different sports throughout her accomplished but relatively short life. Growing up, she was one of seven children born to a family of Norwegian immigrants in Texas, and around the neighborhood when she was a child, she was known for her mischief, but also for her aptitude at sports. At the time, that was mainly baseball. In her late teenage years, she decided to drop out of high school to join an amateur women's basketball team that was sponsored by an insurance company. This was a fairly common thing that insurance companies did at the time to give themselves publicity. She was given a fairly well paid job within the company, but it had very few actual work responsibilities. It was mainly a formality so that she would join the team. While she was a good player on the basketball team, which is true of most sports that she decided to take on, she was not very well liked by the other women on the basketball team, and this was for a few different reasons. The first was that she was fiercely individualistic. She was only concerned about her own performance. She was not really interested in being a team player. The second reason was that she was highly focused on the money she was making and kept trying to make more. This wasn't because of greed, it was because she was sending a lot of her earnings back home to support her family, so she wanted to make as much as possible. But the main reason that they just could not stand her was that she was very cocky. This is something that is really highlighted in the book. The author does not attempt to romanticize it, which I think is really appropriate because it's a big part of who Babe Diedrichson Zaharias was. She was a brash and confident sportswoman who enjoyed playing mind games with competitors. That didn't win her a lot of love from her teammates, and it earned her a lot of criticism throughout her life as well. But the most annoying thing about Babe's bragging is that she could back up those claims with a tremendous amount of talent. She would tell you to your face that she was going to whip you, and then she would go out and do exactly that. Eventually, Babe didn't have to worry anymore about the clashes between herself and her women's basketball teammates, if it ever concerned her at all, because she made, in my opinion, the correct choice to move into individual sports, where she stayed for the rest of her career. She decided to move into track and field because it had captured her interest. She wanted to give it the old college try, as they say, but she started her career off with a bang when she very controversially decided to participate in a competition as a one-woman team, meaning that she would be competing in all of the different events, and she won enough of them to actually secure the win for her company, Employer's Casualty. In that exact same year, in 1932, she went on to compete in the Olympics that were held in Los Angeles that year. She competed in track and field, and even though she hadn't been doing it that long, she won two gold medals, one silver, and set four new world records. And after this, she started getting a little bit of fame, a little bit of notoriety. People started questioning if there was a sport out there that she couldn't master. The answer seemed to be no, when as she was deciding what sport she wanted to take on next, not what sport could she take on next, but what sport she would want to take on next. She started performing on the vaudeville circuit before eventually deciding that the next sport she would conquer would be golf. Golf did come to Babe a lot less naturally than the other sports she decided to take on, but unsurprisingly, she ended up dominating and became one of the top golf stars of the 1940s and 1950s. Even today, if you were to mention her name, she is probably the most well-known for her achievements in golf. But this book doesn't just discuss her myriad athletic accomplishments, it also discusses her personal life and also her place in the public eye. She was a sports superstar. She did get famous because she was so accomplished, and the press always had a lot to say about her. Primarily, there were a lot of criticisms of her appearance. In the early years of her career, at least, she was not even concerned with appearing slightly feminine. All of her focus was on being the best at sports, where I would argue her focus should have been. But the press had other ideas. The press very frequently commented upon the masculine side of Babe. They thought she looked like a man, they thought she played like a man, and they were not afraid to make fun of her for it in the press. 
I could say that that was a product of the time in an era that was very concerned with women being feminine, but I still hear some criticisms to that effect in the press when they discuss female sports stars. So as part of those conversations the press was having about Babe's masculinity, they didn't directly insinuate because of the time period, but they definitely did casually hint at the fact that Babe might be gay. Those rumors persisted until she met and then eventually married Macho Man and theatrical wrestler George Zaharias, with whom she was initially extremely well matched, but eventually the relationship did begin to sour over the years. You would never know that though by the show of PDA they would always put on for the press. Her husband George was extremely supportive of her career, to say the very least. He was actually a little bit too supportive at times. He pushed her a little bit too hard, but he financed a lot of her career. He had a considerable amount of wealth coming into the marriage. He saw her potential, so he financed her efforts. He would help her support her family back home so she could just focus on being great. He actually managed her career for a portion of their marriage. The changing dynamics of their marriage were very interesting in this book. I thought they were very well documented and very well handled. It all felt very realistic. Even though they were putting on one face for the press, you could see how they had their highs and lows, like pretty much every marriage has. Babe didn't have a ton of friends because she was so focused on sports, but she did have a very close relationship with fellow golfer Betty Dodd. There was and still is some speculation that it may have been a little bit more than a friendship, that it may have been a romantic relationship. But regardless, she was close enough with Babe that she moved in with Babe and George for the last six years of Babe's life. For a portion of that, Betty was helping to care for Babe because in 1953, Babe was diagnosed with colon cancer. She was able to fight it for a few years. In 1954, she was well enough to return to golf to make a comeback. And not just as a formality, she actually won a championship in 1954, which is just proof of how remarkable this woman was. During this time in her life, Babe was very vocal and outspoken about the need for cancer testing. She was an advocate for cancer awareness in a time where speaking about cancer was not done as casually as it is today. It was a lot more delicate of a subject. It was something you didn't really bring up, but she saw the need for people to talk about it, to make it more of a normal thing to go and get tested for cancer before it advanced to the point where her cancer had. Sadly, Babe's cancer was very advanced. It ended up coming back and spread throughout her body. She passed away in September 1956 at the age of 45. While she's definitely not the most well-known Babe in sports, that title definitely belongs to Babe Ruth, she definitely was one of the greatest sportswomen of the 20th century, and I would say one of the greatest sportswomen of all time. To excel in the way that she did in so many different sports, only a few of which I've spoken about in this video, there are plenty more to discover if you read this book, was really something special. And it wasn't just special for the time, it's just special, period. By the end of her life, she was a generally popular, well-liked figure by people, even given her sometimes rocky relationship with the press. And definitely when I was reading this book with modern eyes, I saw that the criticisms that were thrown at her by the press were not always legitimate. Some of them were, some of them definitely weren't. For example, I think if a person is athletic, then they're just athletic and it has nothing to do with being masculine or being feminine. I think there's a really big problem with saying that athleticism is inherently masculine. But what the press was definitely honest about, which seemed to turn some people off from her, was her cockiness. She had a natural bravado, a natural swagger. There was nothing humble about her. She knew how good she was, she would tell you how good she was, and then she would go out and show you how good she was. I'm not sure this would be newsworthy if she weren't a woman. I think to say that a male sports star is cocky, no one would bat an eye, but because she was a woman, it was newsworthy. But also, as the book shows, because the author is able to go back and fact check a lot of Babe's claims when the media at the time didn't care to or didn't have the ability to do so, 
Babe wasn't above telling a lie in order to be more in control of her own image or to make herself look better. For instance, she would lie about never having tried a sport before when she obviously had because she wanted to make her natural aptitude look grander than it was. This book does a really fantastic job of giving you a full image or as close to a full image as possible of who Babe Diedrichs and Zaharias was as a person because she definitely was a very very talented athlete. That was a huge part of who she was. But what I don't think is obvious when you're just looking at a summary of her accomplishments is what a tremendous performer she was. It's one of the reasons why I think she was able to make such consistently good money on the vaudeville circuit, why she could always turn back to that, and why also I think she married the equivalent of a WWE heel. She was ready to give him the old razzle-dazzle. There was a natural showmanship to her, and I think the book portrays her perfectly. You can see all of her strengths and weaknesses as a person, and you are still standing back, ready to be awed by her. There was and still is a lot to love about Babe, but there is also a lot that you will raise an eyebrow at. She was definitely not an unproblematic figure. She had some questionable tactics and opinions. I really do have to applaud this book for not just focusing on her athletic achievements and for showing all the good and bad parts about her, for showing who she really was and giving us a sense of what all she brought to the table. Even if you're not the biggest sports fan, I think the personalities and the history contained within this biography will be enough to pull you in. It is all told in an extremely entertaining way with a compelling narrative, and I highly recommend it. If you have read Wonder Girl or would like to read it after seeing this review, I would love to hear from you in the comment section below. And if you would like to connect with me somewhere other than YouTube, I am on a variety of different places on social media, and the links to all of my profiles are in the description box below. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a wonderful day, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.